Well, this I, is, is, is this your first appearance on Ace Cast Live? Uh, it is. It is. Well, we've been trying to get you. We've been trying to work our people, talking to your people. You're not easy to book. <laughs> hey, I didn't even know I had people, so I'm glad to be here, though. How is everything going for you? Man, going good. Yeah, we're uh, right here in the dog days and, you know, just getting through these summer months. Looks like we're kind of coming together. So, yeah, things are going good right now. I think for you and where you are in your career, to have this opportunity to really be a big part at the back of a bullpen just has to be every day. You can't wait to get to work. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I know a lot of guys feel that way. You know, a lot of guys that were maybe just looking for an opportunity who had kind of been sitting in the minors for a while. Um, you know, obviously I was one of those guys and the way it's gone this year is, you know, we've had a little bit longer leashes to, you know, kind of figure things out up here just because it's such a learning process. But yeah, obviously coming to the field every day, getting to be in a big league ballpark every day is, you know, something, been dreaming of forever so yeah it's, it's a great opportunity yeah we talk about it all the time and it's whether you know because we see a lot of different players come in and out even though when the a's are having good years that happens and you say you know the great thing about coming to the a's it's the land of opportunity if you do well you will move up if you do well you will play that is the bottom line and that's not always the case in other organizations is that something you know when you came to the a's you realize i'm gonna actually get a legit shot yeah, you know, it was it was something where, you know, I came over here after COVID year where I didn't, you know, even get invited to the alternate site. You know, I'm kind of, you know, just sitting there trying to figure out what my baseball career is going to look like past 2020 and, you know, get over here. And they had made that very apparent that it was like, look, you know, you're essentially playing for your spot. And if you pitch better than everybody else, then you're going to be the guy who moves. And that's really all you can ask for as a player. You know, I know that a lot of times with analytics, the way that it's kind of set up now is you're just really hoping for an opportunity that, you know, your numbers can show it. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely fortunate to be an A because that's kind of how it's gone since I've been over here. Well, right now you're leading, and I don't even know if you guys pay attention to this. You're leading the American league in holds. Now that gives me something to talk about a show <laughs> like this. And I do the pre and I do the post and everything. But for you, does that matter to you to even look at that? You know, I, I think as a rookie, it, it doesn't as much. You know, I, I think it's cool to say those things. But like, like you said, I mean, th this has been a big opportunity for me. So yeah. being a rookie, I just want to stay here. You know, I, I know that uh, there's been a lot, lot of opportunity to back end that bullpen this year. And so for me, just being fortunate enough to go out there and have the opportunity to pitch in clutch situations has been the coolest thing for me. You know, I'm, I'm not a big stat guy myself. I kind of made that a point not to look at it because I think sometimes you can get a little too consumed with maybe – you know, reaching for a certain number or whatever. And, you know, once you get up here, you realize you just need to take the ball and give yourself a scoreless inning, you know, put your team in a position to win a game. So, yeah, I, I can't say I'm too big on the stats, but I I did not know that. That's that's pretty cool. I, I love how you come in and you're just airing it out. It's like, <laughs> here it is, fastball slider, here you go. Sometimes you're what I like to call effectively wild. Um, but that can play for you. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that people need to realize when you come out of the bullpen is that you're coming in to not pitch to contact. Great to have your defense work behind you, but you don't want a whole whole lot of contact. Talk about your game plan when you come in out of the bullpen, especially late in games. Yeah, I think that's kind of always been the scouting report around me. Um, obviously, sometimes that, you know, can be a deficit the way that, you know, I've been in the past. And I think it's been the biggest learning opportunity this first half is like, Hey, you know, even though you're not trying necessarily to pitch to hard contact because you have a big league defense behind you, sometimes sometimes you have to. And I think that's kind of the approach I've taken lately. You know, I really had a stretch there where it was just the walks were getting out of control. And I know it's frustrating to watch, it's frustrating to pitch the way that it happened. But, you know, at this point, it's just been a mindset that, hey, if, if they can hit it, you know, see if you can. But just trying to go out there with the most confidence you can and, you know, saying that the, the coaches believe I should be here for a reason. I'm really going out there with my best stuff. And, you know, at this point, it's worked out pretty well. Sometimes it's release point. Sometimes it's just your body. You're a little out of control with the body. So when, when it's not going well for you, what do you think it is? Yeah, I mean, for anybody who's watched, obviously I don't have the most – orthodox mechanics uh <laughs> you know i i think a lot of it is just timing for me you know it's it's not necessarily i'm a guy you know trying to hit an exact spot it's you know usually you know cutting the plate in half one way or the other and trying to go there and you know i think just trying to maybe expand where i'm throwing the ball and just making sure it's in the zone or at least you know a, a quality pitch to see if they're going to get something to swing at and you know so for me I, I think a lot of it's more mentality even though a lot of people would probably say no like your body's off or whatever just because the way you throw I, I think it's probably a combination of both but honestly when you get your mentality right especially at this level that you know you can't be scared to face the hitters at this level as good as they are you know just be ready to go attack them and your ability to pitch up in the zone and the ball just it's one of those you know 
defies gravity type. Your ball stays up. It plays well because batters can't get on top of it. Talk about how that's a strength for you. Yeah, I think that's something, especially working in the offseason. Uh, I've worked with uh, Matt Hobbs. He's a coach at Arkansas now. Um, and even Wes Johnson, who was the guy uh, with the Twins. And that was when I really started understanding analytics and, you know, seeing what my fastball does. And you have that, you know, vertical break, essentially that ride for people who aren't familiar with the terms. And you start realizing that like, okay, this is the reason a pitch, you know, succeeds in this part of the zone and really understand who I was as a pitcher. Cause you know, how it was growing up, it's hey down and away, see if you can locate down there. And then you realize, well, that's not the most effective way for me to pitch. Um, so I think really getting in the off season, getting in the lab and just kind of understand who I was developing, you know, who I was in the minor leagues, trying to not necessarily reinvent myself, but, you know, pitch the way that my body and my, you know, fastball especially plays off of that. So I think a lot of that goes into offseason work and, you know, just tr really trying to execute it out here. And that's the great thing about the technology that we have in our sport, because back in the day, they tried to teach everybody. I'm a failed old college pitcher myself and everything was live down, Build it. They used to say, build the foundation, build the house down, and you want everything sinking down. And now you're a part of a generation where they say, no, up, because they can't, there's no launch angle on your high fastball. And you're in a huge ballpark. If there's a swirling wind right now, wait till it gets nighttime. Go ahead, try and hit the ball in the air here. So, I mean, I think that that's really been good for guys like you. The fact that if there was just a keep it down and sink it, that's not always the best. Everybody's different and your strengths are different. Yeah. And like I said, I, it's definitely a, you know, a point to make of emphasis is this ballpark is favorable, especially for guys like me who are just needing to prove to yourself, Hey, you need to throw strikes to these guys, see what they can do against you. And, you know, you'll have balls that are hit pretty good here. And it's like, you know, you have a great outfield out there. Um, so it's like, if I can just keep the ball in the park and it's, you know, fairly easy to do here compared to maybe some other places. So I, I think, like I said, just learn who you are as a pitcher, learn your ballpark and really trust in your stuff. Well, since you brought up Arkansas, do you feel bad that your SEC is ruining college football? <laughs> I mean, do, do you take any responsibility for that? Well, here's what I want to say is I hate it more than anybody because I grew up an OU fan. So I oh, have I have Texas this, and OU in the so SEC. I, you got Texas now, which I've always, you know. With A&M and Missouri? Yeah, always hated Texas, but yeah. I grew up with the four of them growing up. Those were, you know, I was a Big 12 guy growing up. Yeah. and. So you have these teams now. My family's all – well, my mom's an OSU fan. My dad and the rest of my family's all big OU fans. So now I have, you know, this rivalry that's going to end up, you know, just developing because Arkansas know you're going to be playing every year. So I can't say I'm the biggest fan of it either because it was kind of nice having the separation of the conferences. Yeah, the big rival for Oklahoma back in the day was Nebraska, yeah. and they're in the Big Ten. Yeah, it's – things have changed. Yeah, I get to hear stories from my dad about, you know, how uh, those 70s Nebraska teams, you know, used yeah. to be just a joy. Some of the greatest watch. college football mm. games ever was, uh, it was well, Texas, the Red River Shootout, or what do we call it now? The uh, Same, so Red, Red River Shootout. Well, they have a new yeah. name because they don't want Shootout. There's a new oh, name okay. for it. See, that might but, yeah, the, the river, on me. You know what I'm talking about. That Texas, Oklahoma has always been big, but Oklahoma, Nebraska, back when I was a kid, was big eight. And those were such huge games. And now I'm just trying to follow it. You're like, it just doesn't make – and USC – and UCLA in the Big Ten. Yeah, that one doesn't make sense to me. I will say for the OU Nebraska one, though, I got to go. I want to say it was in 2001. It was one of my first football games, but Nebraska was one, OU was two, and they came to Norman. And it was, I mean, even to this day, I was probably five years old, but a game I vividly remember just because it was, I mean, such an electric ball game. You have the huge rivalry. I mean, just a great crowd. But, yeah, my dad has kind of instilled, you know, making sure I understand that, you know, Nebraska is right there with Texas as far as how that rivalry is. I've been to, uh, I've done a couple of games at, at Oklahoma. Beautiful and, and a ton of fun. You the Whenever I've done LSU, I've done a bunch of these games and it's like our, you know, people just don't get it. What college football is life. College football is everything. I mean, I mean, Arkansas, for God's sake. I mean, it's, yeah. it's so huge. And the tailgating and the parties, yeah. people get there like as games on Saturday, these RVs are rolling in on <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. That's one thing that, you know, Oh, you had, you have a tailgating atmosphere, but the, that is one thing about the sec is different. You know, Arkansas hasn't been necessarily a powerhouse since I've been, you know, a fan and I've seen alumni from there now, but you know, you go to the tailgate, it's a whole different atmosphere. I mean, it's it's half of the enjoyment is, you know, the tailgating before the game. And it's cool because we have actually some family friends who grew up Arkansas fans. And like I said, they're there at 6 a.m., you know, on Saturday, setting up Friday night, whatever. And it's, I mean, just a whole show. You know, it, that's the 
emphasis of their weekend is getting that tailgate set up. So it was, that was a whole new atmosphere for me, but man, it's been cool. And, and how about for you, USCC guys, is, is Nick Saban never going to retire? Oh man. When is this going to end? You hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you kind of got a guy, we got Sam Pittman now at Arkansas who we're kind of building a program, you know, you kind of have the Arkansas culture, but you know, when you're consistently competing against the recruits that, you know, Alabama's getting and heck and now even Georgia, I mean, it just seems like that it's just a never ending thing that you just can't compete with those guys. But you know, we're, we're coming. We, we feel strong with our team coming this year. We're projected second in the West. So yeah, we're feeling good about football season in, in Fayetteville. Well, now that you know we have fun here on Ace Cast Live and foot and my God, training camp for the Niners starts tomorrow, right? Yeah, Shanahan and Lynch were talking today. So it's like uh, college football before you you know it is here. You got to come back to the program. Hey, you guys, I am I am a huge football guy. Football and baseball are right here for me. So anytime you want, I'm I'm actually a Rams fan. So you know, I know it's probably LA not, Rams fan. So when they were, I grew up when they were in St. Louis. Oh, okay. So when, that, they, when they were there, it was always kind of like we had you. You know, the greatest show on turf. That was yeah. kind of when I came up with football, and that was, you know, one of the closer teams to me. And then when I moved out to L.A., I was like, ah, oh, with the fandom, I don't know if I, you know, jump off the bandwagon and go somewhere else. But it's worked out now. We got Sean McVay, and, you know, things are looking good with Matty oh, Stafford. Oh, what a year was unbelievable. Too bad you weren't here when the Raiders were here. I used to work for the Raiders, too, and the Raider, this place. You could have seen this place for Raider games. I've uh, heard stories. Yeah. Everybody in costumes, and it was <laughs> rocking. Yeah, I would have loved to seen coming that. here. Yeah, no, that's insane. Well. Appreciate the time. Keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, I don't, I, obviously you guys don't listen to the post game show, but, uh, but there's been some mentions, uh, from me saying I could see, uh, closing some games out in your career. Yeah. Like I said, at this point, you know, we, we have our guys here in the back of the bullpen now that, you know, I, I feel like I've been really effective as a whole. So, you know, as, as I, I guess I would speak for the whole bullpen saying, you know, we are not big stack guys. We don't really care who gets it done as long as we're holding down the score down there. Good stuff. Come back soon. Right, thank you.